Welcome back everybody to another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear tips, inspiration, anything you need to get your photography over to the next level. My name is RC and this week I wanted to kind of do a little bit more of your mail. We posted on Twitter that we wanted your ideas and Scott King had said, RC, I have a client and I need to print a photo at 39 by 43. Any tips on up it using a separate plugin like Perfect Resize? Well, Scott, there's a lot that's changed in terms of Photoshop when it comes to upsizing images. And a lot of the times, what would happen here is, let me just go ahead and pull up something for you to take a look at. Let's say that I want to use this one picture here. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up here. And we used this one last week, right? I'm gonna go to image and under image, I'm going to use image size. Now, what would happen with this is a lot of the times it was automatic and what you needed to do with this was people, the general common practice was that you would do it in 10% intervals. You would increase 10%, increase 10%. And as you were doing that from here, instead of pixels, what people were doing is switching to percent. Right, so you would just go up and 10% stops and 10% stops. And there's people that argue that that worked very well, that it didn't work very well, and at a couple hundred percent, probably over 200%, you would use a secondary program. Now, what has been changed inside of Photoshop is this. You'll see right here under the resample section, you have a section called automatic. Under the automatic section, you have this one section here called bicubic smoother. And what Bicubic Smoother does is it allows you to put in right, some resampling as if it were being step-based. So in this case, what I would do is I would switch over to whatever your target inches is going to be. And then from here, just make sure that you use the resampling of Bicubic Smoother. Now, your results may vary. It also depends on the type of picture that you're working with, the original source portion of the picture. That might need a little bit of kind of playing around with. Now, the other thing that they added is in the event that you have done something that as you enlarge, it loses a little bit of details, they've added this one section here for preserving details. So you can use one of these two options and you'll be surprised. Photoshop has come a long way in up pictures and I think that a large portion of you that are doing that kind of up could do it right from inside of Photoshop without having to go with extreme image you know, upsizing that you would see in another program. So keep these two things in mind. Don't just switch with automatic. Make sure that you go to preserve details. Make sure that you go to buy cubic smoother. Buy cubic smoother will take care of that 10% increment that you see from there. Now, the other thing that you wanna keep in mind with this is you wanna make sure that you're not necessarily doing everything at 240 DPI, right? So if you're doing something that's four feet wide or five feet wide, you're not gonna be looking at that picture like this, right? There is a certain amount of viewing distance that you're going to have for that, and to that, you can go ahead and decrease the amount of DPI. You can probably go down to 200. You can go down even more, depending on how far away that picture is going to be for you. So keep that in mind when you're making images like this, and you'll be all set. Now, we have a special guest. <laughs> Mr. Scott Kelly, what's going on? Hey, everybody. Nothing, nothing. Just. Uh... Bring in a camera tip, man. <laughs> nice. But you were going to talk to us a little bit, not so much about the post-production side of it, but how to get it right from a white balance point inside of the camera. Right. I want to talk about white balance because I hear so many people that say stuff like, you know what? I really want to get good at color correction in Photoshop. That's what I really need to learn. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know mm -hmm. what? If you get your color right in camera, you don't have to worry about correcting it later because it will be correct right off the bat. Right. Now, So I have two tips for you. The second one is the real tip. But the first one is just kind of a mini tip that'll help get you through most of your white balance problems. The reason why we have white balance problems, why I think most of us have them, is because auto white balance is actually so good. Right. It works about 85% of the time. You get great looking color all the time without even trying. But then you'll run into these situations where, let's say you're outside, you want to do a portrait, you move somebody in the shade, you take a shot, they look blue. Or you walk into a, a restaurant, take a shot, everybody looks yellow. Uh, so there's all these situations that where auto white balance just falls down, right? Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is, how do you get your color right into camera? Mm -hmm. Two words, look up. All you have to do is choose the white balance that matches the lighting conditions you're under. Okay. For example, you take a shot and everybody looks blue, look up. If you see the awning of a building or you see limbs of a tree, you know you're standing in the shade, just switch your light balance to shade. Right? Your, excuse mm -hmm. me, not your light balance, 
Your white. Your white balance, switch that to shade. So if you look up and you see, oh, it's a cloudy day, just switch your white balance to cloudy, right? If you look up and you see fluorescent light bulbs, you know you're in an office, switch it to fluorescent. If you're in a restaurant, switch it to tungsten. So there, that's all you have to do. We have to just take that one extra step and that'll get rid of most of it. Now, there are times where it gets you the caught. 5%. Right, the other 5% is when you're in a mixed lighting situation. Okay. So maybe you're in a restaurant, but you're sitting near the window, lights coming in. You're in a home, there's tungsten lighting, but then it's, there's daylight coming in as well, and you don't know which one to choose. So this is the trick, and this is what the tip is really about, I'm leading up to this, the great right. buildup for this. So this is a really, really handy tip, and I use it myself quite a bit. When you're in one of those situations where you're not sure, you can't just go, oh, I know what this is, it's cloudy you're gonna use the live view white balance trick. Hmm. Step one, switch your camera to live view, like you're gonna shoot video. We're not gonna shoot video, but hit the live view button, and now you're seeing a live view of what's in front of your camera. Right. That's step one. Step two is you're going to basically change the white balance. You're gonna go through them all, pick the one that looks best, and just stop. Now what's the difference with doing that in live view? In live view mode, you're actually seeing what it looks like. Okay. I don't care what the words are. It doesn't matter even which one I choose. I'm just looking at my eye and say, when does the white balance look good? The best way I can show you this is I brought a little video clip. Okay. Uh, not a little video clip, actually. A video clip. <laughs> I did a little video clip for you on location, and once you see the video clip, it'll all make sense. Take a look. All right, our first step is to press the live view button on the back of your camera, and this displays the image on the LCD. Now you can see right now, it's way, way too blue. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna toggle through the different white balances, and we're just gonna stop at the one that looks best to us. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use the little dial here. We're gonna go through, we're gonna look at these two yellow, two blue, two cyan, and when you find one that looks good, all you have to do, ooh, that one looks pretty good there, is literally stop turn off live view and that's it. You just set your white balance to the perfect light for this situation. All right, so that's the tip now. Again, you're not gonna have to do this every time you're setting your white balance, just when you wind up in a sticky white balance situation. Nice. Now, we have some viewer mail, right? Luis Navarro had asked for a three light setup or how to be able to use multiple lights in a shoot. We actually broke it down, light by light by light. You're gonna see that coming up next here in Photography Tips and Tricks. I have an extraordinary number of images of my children. I have them everywhere. Some are on Facebook and some are on Instagram. Some are literally stuck in a hard drive in a computer in my garage. If I lost those images, it would hurt. With Miley, I have everything archived and saved and having everything together in one place is kind of a dream. Milio is a great tool to help me better manage my most important method of communication, photography. Welcome back everybody to Photography Tips and Tricks RC here now. This one is going out from the Facebook page of mine. We got a question that came in from Luis Navarro. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, make sure that you go to facebook.com slash aboutrc. It's pretty straightforward, right? You get to see my Pac-Man <laughs> pancakes, my fish pancakes. I post all sorts of random stuff, but I do ask for your questions as well. So facebook.com slash aboutrc, that's the place you want to go. And I had asked, and inside of here, let's see. Thank you very much, Robert Norris. Pretty cool, an episode twice a week. Micah, I would love to, I think it'd be really cool, but there's a lot of other stuff that we're working on here. Uh, video on how to make my monitor match my lab prints. That's a good one. Integrating Squarespace or Smug Mug, working on that. We have that, that's gonna be over at the Kelby One site, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it here. So, Luis Navarro. I don't know what's been covered before, but I'd love to see some tips on making simple, single, or double light setups. So. I figured that would be a good spot for us to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, just a general light setup, right? When you're working with stuff, almost all general lights, big, soft, high, camera right. That's usually one light when you'll use that. And generally when you see that kind of light setup, you'll see it as just known as a key light, right? So here's a picture of my buddy Richie, right? In the studio, and that is the key light that we're working with. So you'll see that the, it's over here, right? A little bit high up. From that, matter of fact, what I can do here is I'll show you what the actual setup look like. So you'll notice that there's my camera and you'll notice that this one box that we have right here, that's the main key light that we have. Now we also have a second light that sits right there 
and then we have a light that sits in the back. So this is a pretty straightforward three light setup that we're working with. Now, in this case, what I did is I turned the hair light and the kicker off, right? Or both accent lights that we have off. So a nice portrait that you have here, right? So we have this light high off and to the right, it's causing a little bit of a shadow, and it's okay, it's not bad, right? But I'd like to be able to offer a little bit more definition when we're working with this. So the next thing that I would probably add to this is that accent light, right? So you'll hear single light setups or double light setups. Chances are you're probably not using two lights in the exact same spot. You would probably be using one light in one spot and then another light to be able to accent something. So in this case, a hair light, right? So this is that second light that we had in that one spot over to the left. Now what I did for this was I turned off that initial light. I didn't necessarily want that light that was high and to the right. So in this case, we're dealing with this light that sits right here, right? So that's that light right there. So we turned off the main light and we left just that light on the left. So that shows you what it's doing from an accent. So if you look on the computer here, I'll go ahead and we'll just tab in. We'll make this full screen. It's giving me all of this accent here and here. It highlights here, and it's highlighting all of this edge stuff that we have right there. Now, if you move to this, there's that backlight. So if you look at the diagram that we have here, right, I have that light almost directly behind him, and on it I have a pan, right, a dish, reflective dish, and I have a grid on it because I want to be able to control that light output. I only want to hit it in one spot, and I want it to kind of flare out from there, much in the same way that we did the graffiti person in the previous episode. So you'll see that right there, all that's doing is it's providing a little bit of accent around him from behind. So here, there's your hair light, I mean, there's your accent light, there's your main light, accent light, there's your backlight. Now, a lot of the times put together, Oh, no, that's just your key light and your side light. We haven't turned on the backlight. You turn on the backlight, now you have them all together. Now, I wanted to kind of point it out that way because that's kind of the setup that you set up when you're doing a picture. It's also a great way for you to troubleshoot, and this is the second point to this. When you're trying to come up with a setup and when you're trying to make something look good and you feel like you're overwhelmed with the amount of lights that are working, work in very small instances. It is not uncommon for me to take something and go, ah, something looks bad, something looks bad, and I will take myself all the way down to one light. And I'll go, all right, well, is that light in the position that I wanted? Yes or no? Right here in this one section, is that light in the position that I wanted? Yes or no? Now, I'm gonna break from my script here real quick, and I wanna kind of show you something. Because here, notice in this one, you'll see that the light actually isn't hitting him here as much, right? And I was like, well, I kind of wanted a little bit more of an accent there, so I moved the light back into that one spot, the difference between here and here. Notice how much is coming off of that shoulder, right? So that shoulder gets illuminated a little bit more, the edges of his jacket get illuminated a little bit more, the hands get illuminated a little bit more, right? So that fills it in pretty good. Now from there, let's go ahead and just come over here and we have that, once we have that set up, then I can go, all right, well, that light's dialed in. Once I have that light dialed in, I'll turn it off. Move this to the left and to the right. Let me show you this one right here. So I'm gonna go to the folder in this library and just show you that the first time that I did it, you'll see that the light was over to the left. And I was like, ah, oh, man, not cool. I don't need that. I need it actually angled a little bit more there. Once you have that angled exactly where you want it, then I said, all right, well, that's cool. Now that I have those two, now let me go ahead and turn on those two lights and see if those two lights work together, right? The key light, the accent light. Now that those two work together and they seem to be working okay, let me go ahead and add the third light. So you wanna work procedurally. You wanna work one step after another and after another. You don't wanna just throw lights up and just go, oh, let's see if that works. You want them to all have a specific purpose. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, I would recommend that you go to the Kelby One website. Go to kelbyone.com. We've got tons of different stuff there. Joe McNally's got some amazing classes on there. Dave Black's got some amazing classes on there. 
take a look at those. They're going to be definitely worth it. Now, we have a PeachBit ebook deal. We have a 40% off of this book. Go to peachbit.com slash Kelby1, enter in the code Kelby1, and you're going to get Photoshop CC, the 2014 release visual quick start guide. That book is by Elaine Wyman and Peter Lorecas. It's a great ebook for you to have, and you can have it for 40% off. Just make sure you go to peachbit.com slash Kelby1. Now, the website to watch. We've launched another webcast. Go to the Lightroom Killer Tips website, right? So it's over at lightroomkillertips.com. We're posting constant content over on anything that you want to be able to know from Lightroom. Every now and again, we'll cover Lightroom inside of here, but I got to be honest with you, you're going to want to see the stuff that is over on the Lightroom Killer Tips website. And we have the new show, The Lightroom Show. It's the number one show right now on iTunes. So we're very proud of that. And we have you guys to thank for that. So make sure that you go take a look at that. That's pretty much for this week. Next week, we'll have Mr. Scott Kelby here on Photography Tips and Tricks again. We'll see you soon.